Hello everyone, this is Etho, and I have another tutorial for you guys today. This one is very special. I'm showing you my new hopper timer inventions here, or hopper clocks. These things are absolutely amazing. So previously in Minecraft, before this redstone update, the way we've been keeping track of timing in redstone circuits, uh, we usually use uh, different methods, like if we want five minutes, we will use items despawning to trigger the signal or if we're looking for like a one minute timer we'll use an arrow despawning or we can use cobwebs to items falling through cobwebs to get 24 seconds each cobweb they travel through that kind of thing uh, now with this hopper timer device we have a very precise way of timing stuff over a long range with a lot of flexibility so I'll show you this this is really cool Basically, I have two hoppers feeding into each other here. And the items that we put in here ping pong back and forth between the two with this setup. So if we put eight items in, you can see it fully empties into this one. And then these items start going to go back into here until it's full and then back again. So it's ping ponging back and forth. And with this, we can generate a redstone pulse at a fixed length of time. Each item we put in adds 7 ticks to the delay or uh, 0 0.7 seconds but there's also a half a half cycle method we can use to get even more precision with this but at the expense of halving the maximum time uh, this will run for. So with these hoppers we can put up to 320 items in and that allows us to make uh, a timer somewhere between the range of, of like 0 to 3 minutes and 44 seconds roughly uh, depending on how many items we put in here accurate to 7 ticks alright guys I'll run you through how to build these even though you can probably see it here because they're only one tall uh, there's two different versions I have the a piston version here which is more compact but a lot more noisy and then we have the silent version here, the silent redstone version. So let's build this one first. Uh, basically, to make a hopper face another hopper, you have to uh, hold shift and click facing that hopper you want it to connect to, like that. And if we do the same for this one, they connect like that. Then we put two comparators, one on each side, two blocks. Um, redstone and then pistons with a redstone block between the two like that let's try it out that's at maximum speed if we add more items it slows down Whew, thank you all right so let's move on to the redstone version hopefully I can remember it uh, again same deal two hoppers facing each other and then uh, two comparators on the side and then we have uh, blocks on both sides redstone torch uh, this goes into a repeater and then we have over here this is really important on both of them we're using an RS NOR latch that's kinda of the trick to this all so th this is a way of building a redstone RS NOR latch do that and that and then we connect this to there like that and we have ourselves a redstone version let's try it out you see it's starting to pulse if we add more it slows down very cool very very cool let's get a note block in here so we can make sure it's working oh yeah that's nice so maybe let's look over uh, some of the tricks and uh, cool features of these hopper timer things uh, first of all one thing I really like about them is they're very easy to control like if we want to stop it uh, we can put power pretty much anywhere to stop it if we do that all the items gather to this hopper if we put it on this one all items gather to the opposite hopper. We can power the hoppers themselves. 
and that freezes it where it's at because uh, both hoppers are being powered at the moment. This one from there, this one from here. I believe if we wait it... Yeah, if we wait, then they'll all go to this one. Um, if we... we can power... Oop. We can power the redstone to stop it, or the pistons themselves. Um, what's really cool, though, with this is we can actually use it sort of as a stopwatch. Like if we want it to stop timing for a moment, but we don't want it to uh, lose lose its count like where it is in the timing process, we can just do something like this and have uh, both hoppers being powered at the same time. And then if we unpower them, it's free to run again. But then if we do that, it freezes. So we have 20 in there, 3 in there. And it's starting to count up again. We can freeze it again. And it remembers where it is in the timing process that way. So we have the option of stopping it to it, uh, like where one of them's all full, and uh, start this, the start of a cycle, or we can stop it uh, in the middle of a cycle. Uh, something neat you can do with this piston version of the timer. If you were to run wire across both these blocks here, uh, you can actually pick up the half cycle timing. So that makes it twice as precise. Instead of every item counting for 7 ticks in the timer, every item will count for 3.5 ticks. That does reduce the maximum timing you can have by half, though. So keep that in mind. Uh, this is also a really nice way of getting a quick pulse out of the thing, if that's what you're looking for. Nice one tick pulse there. There's also some weird things you can do with uh, these half ticks. I'm not going to get into too much detail, but I'll just show you an example of what I mean. Uh, if we were to do this, you can get a better idea. Um, Basically, using the same wire, you can detect if it's the half cycle or the full cycle. Like this one's pulsing every time. This one's only pulsing every full cycle. So just, just weird little quirks with how the repeaters work with half ticks like that you can use. But that is pretty complicated. Um, same with this thing. Uh, if you want to get the half cycle out of it, you would have to do something like this, I believe. Pull it from both sides, put it into a block, and then it'll pulse every half cycle. Um, if you want a quick pulse, like a one tick pulse, again, there's a trick you can do here. If you just run wire between this block and that torch, and then we can invert it, although I think we might need a repeater. Yeah, it's too quick. We need a repeater to catch it. There, now we're getting a one tick pulse. Very cool. So even though these hopper timers are extremely cool, there is two main flaws I see with them, or two things they can't do. Uh, First of all, they're not very, well, they are precise, but they're not um, to the tick, like that you can get within seven ticks. So, for example, if you were trying to get one minute exactly from these, you might not be able to. It might be like one minute and, and 0 0.3 seconds or something like that. You know, it's not exact necessarily uh, within that 0.7 seconds is the accuracy. Now the other issue is there's no way to quick reset it. Like if you start the timer, then you stop it and then try to restart it real quick, uh, it can't. It has to wait for the items to flow through the hoppers, which can take a bit of time. So that's the other issue. But that being said, they're still very cool and very useful. I plan on using them a lot. Um, now let's look into how to calculate exactly how long your timer is going to be based on how many items you put in it. So I wrote out a book here with some formulas. It's complicated. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
I've spent hours trying to understand this now, and I'm still not at the level of comprehension I want to be. But I'm going to keep keep experimenting with this. So here's my book. Uh, one tick translate to 0.1 seconds in Minecraft, so they're interchangeable. Uh, one item, every item we add, adds 7 ticks, or 0 0.7 seconds, to our total time. Unless we're doing that half time thing, then it's half of that. Um, and then this is the formula. Item times item time, which is 0 0.7, times base time, uh, t depending on which one we're using. This one is, wait, did I write that right? Yeah. This one is negative, uh, negative 3, I guess we would do negative 0 0.35 seconds, and this one is uh, positive 0 0.7 seconds. So let's let's just do an example here. Let's say we put 30 items in the one on the right here. Uh, we times that by item time is always 0 0.7 unless we're doing the half time. Then it's 0 0.35, but 0 0.7, and then plus base time. The base time for the silent redstone one is 0 0.7 equals our t total time. So I'm just gonna get my calculator here. 30 times 0.7 plus 0.7 is 21 point, 21.7 seconds exactly It would be our timing with 30 items. Uh, let's say we wanted to figure out a specific time, how many items we need for that. Then we can use this formula here. So let's say our, our target time is 30 seconds. So time in brackets here, minus base time, which is this number here, 0 0.7. Like I said, it's complicated. This is divide divide by item item time, which is 0 0.7, unless we're doing the half time, equals, let's figure it out, 30 minus 0.7, and then divide by 0.7, da 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 equals 40, 41 items, 0. 0.85714, so 41 items plus 0. 0.85 and all that. Uh, we can't actually have part of an item in it though, so that's where the inaccuracy comes from. Uh, if we figure out exactly, we can figure out exactly how much that is if we do 0. 0.857, that number there times 0 0.7 equals, and I know this already, this is 0 0.6 ticks. So basically we're missing 6 ticks from our, from our uh, timer here. So if we added that on the end of here, uh, when we first start up the clock, it would be exactly 30 seconds if we had 41 items in the hoppers. But then every every cycle after the first one, it's not going to be that. It's going to be it's going to be 41 times <laughs> item time 0 0.7 plus 0 0.7 equals, I'll just figure that out, 29.4 with 41 items in. Or even even with this repeaters at the end, because they're not actually lengthening the the loop here. They're just afterwards. So <laughs> if you're aiming for 30 seconds, put in uh, 42 items, and that will be 30.1 seconds. So that's as close as you can get. But uh, anyway, that's kind of the way it works. I'm going to keep experimenting with this and look into it further. Uh, as you can imagine, you can also combine two of these, one as a multiplier, to get extremely high times. Or I'm going to look into using a dropper-hopper combo, so that basically every pulse this gives out, it will send out one item to the hopper. You'd have to have that powered. Oop. Let's just get a torch. and put some items in here.
So those stay in here every time we send a pulse, like from our timer here, it would send one item into the hopper. And then when this hopper is empty, uh, it would send out a signal and that would reset everything. So doing something like that, you would get 320 items or 320 times our maximum, which is three, three minutes. And you can imagine the crazy amount of times you could reach with that. Um, just figuring it out now. 60. That's not that crazy, actually. It's about a day or so. Just under a day, I think, if I figured that out right. But anyway, that's going to be it for, for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this and found it informative. It's a bit complicated, but it's actually a very cool timer. Um, you don't have to worry too much about this if you don't if you're not worried about exact timings, like you can probably eyeball it too and just don't worry. <laughs> like just toss items in until you get a timing that looks right for what you're doing. That's another way of just timing stuff too without doing all the math. But uh, all right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.